All right, so this is a rather long gish looking question. Um, it says, suppose that a particle with some mass m is described by the following wave function. Okay, they are giving us a solution. That's nice. Um, because once we have solution, potentially all we need to do is take derivatives of the uh, wave function. So a, b, and k are constants, good. Assuming that the particle is free or uh, or in the, the, the zero potential energy pool. Okay, uh, follow the steps below to show that this function is a solution of the station and for the particle and find the energy that the particle has in this state. Okay. Um, hmm. All right. Uh, I got my reservations about this being a real function, but um, I think there's some point here. So let's, let's give it a try and see. <laughs> uh, I think this might be coupled with the next question. So it says uh, stationary Schrodinger equation with a uh, zero potential energy read. Yeah, that looks right. And just so for the comparison with the form that should be in textbook, this is h bar, h over two pi. h bar squared over two m uh, times minus one. That's basically the momentum squared over two m. Uh, oh, once you do this position derivative, that's the important part of the momentum operator. So, Kinetic energy is equal to the total energy. That's basically what this expression is saying. It says, evaluate the left-hand side of the stationary Schrodinger equation for the given psi. Simplify the resulting expression and enter your answer below. Um, oh, I, you know, let me use the Sage math to do this. It's kind of fun to do it. <laughs> so, um, so, let me uh, define the psi of x. So that's going to be, um, so psi is a function psi of x. Um, actually, am I doing this right? Uh, let me do it this way. I'm going to declare the, some of the variables I'll be using. x. Uh, a and K and um, can I say psi is function name the psi that is a function of X does it work that way mm. um, yeah I don't think uh, let me do it this way psi function of whatever is a times cosine of k times x plus b times uh, sine of k times x. I think that's going to be fine. Oh, forgot to declare b as my variable. Okay, that's my psi. Let me make sure I can take the derivative of this. So differentiate psi with respect to x. I think, yeah, yeah, that looks fine. So, um, for this here, for uh, the evaluation of the left hand side, I need uh, I need two position derivatives of psi. So, um, so I'm gonna do that, but I need to declare a couple more variables: variable h bar and m. So, what I want to write down is okay minus um, times oh well minus h bar squared over 2 times m times, and I need the derivative of psi with respect to x twice. I think that's, wait, with respect to x twice, I think that's the syntax. Uh, I can also do it this way. Differentiate with respect to x twice. Um, okay, so that's the result. And here in the format hint, it says write out psi of x in the form given above. So we'll just spell it all out. Uh, let me plug it in into the system to just uh, make sure I'm in the right, um, right path. Now, here's one thing that you can do. You can um, just, uh, you know, plug this in as it appears. 
as in one half. Uh, make sure you don't get stuck in the denominator times a times k squared. Uh, make sure you don't get stuck in the exponent times cosine of k times x. You don't even need that times thing. You could just do um, b uh, k oops uh, b k squared. Uh, get out of exponent sine kx. Uh, my myth it understands the implicit multiplication mainly because it's got all the variables defined for it. So when it says kx, it can understand, oh, that's a variable k times a variable x, not a new variable called kx. Uh, okay, parenthesis close, times, ah, and this is where you have to be careful. There's no h bar. So wherever you see h bar, you need to replace the way h divided by 2 pi. And then h bar squared divided by m. So, you know, you could simplify it, but I don't think it's uh, something that um, where you would gain much out of simplifying. Um, so part B says, by setting this left-hand side equal to the right-hand side of the uh, stational? All right, uh, that sounds weird to me. Stational Schrodinger equation find the expression for the constant e. Cancel out what cancels out. Ah, okay. So on the right-hand side, you see that, oh, so we are just saying all of this is equal to e times psi. Uh, let me see if this will work. I'm gonna see if, uh, what happens if I divide this output and uh, with the psi, uh, and then maybe full simplify. Um, it might not, it might refuse to simplify on the basis that uh, it's possible to the, oh wait, it does simplify, okay, and that looks about reasonable, and, and, and you know, the way it worked out is when you look at psi, it has this a times cosine of kx, a times cosine of kx, b times sine of kx, so you, when you factor out k squared, though, that thing cancels out. And so let me just put that in. Um, I have uh, one half, make sure you don't get stuck in the denominator, times h bar, h over 2 pi uh, squared times k, oops, don't get stuck in the exponent, k squared divided by m. That's it. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, there was some comment here about um, for the stationary solution to be stationary solution to be a solution to the time dependent Schrodinger equation, we tack on this time dependence so that the full time dependent wave function is um, the time independent solution times the complex exponential. Um, and yeah, this kind of simple time dependent only works for stationary solutions, also known as energy eigenstates. As a rule, you can always choose coefficients in such a way to express stationary solution uh, in such a way to I think that express should be angular. You know what? Let me do this. Uh, I think this is one of my questions. So let me just uh, fix the things that's uh, bothering me. Uh, What's bothering? Yeah, that's one of my questions. So I didn't like the stational, uh, uh, stational. Yeah, it really should be stationary because that's the phrase I used there. And then as a rule, you can always choose quite such a way to ensure ensure that stationary solution is expressed entirely as a real value of the function, but the time dependent solution must be a, yeah, yeah. And um, I thought there was another question that uh, made a point of um, com complex exponential being required, uh, even when you are not tacking on the time dependence. Let me look at the next question because that might be it. Uh, question nine? No, it's not. I don't know. I'll just move on. Um, but what what I will say is that this is is actually a quite complicated uh, wave function because um, 
if you had a wave that's just traveling to the right or just traveling to the left, uh, you cannot express it this way. It's just, this is something more akin to a standing wave solution. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll just leave that there. <laughs>